My name is Paul Clarkson and I'm curator of Husbandry Operations at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Behind me is the biggest exhibit at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. It's over a million gallons. It's called our Outer Bay Waters exhibit, where we display a lot of unique species that you won't see elsewhere in the country. Uh, things like tunas, and hammerhead sharks, and of course our great white shark. So in order to maintain the exhibit, we need to polish the windows, clean the bottom, and just keep it spick and span for our guests. Anytime that we're diving our Outer Bay Water exhibit, we wear a chain mail suit. The wetsuit is to keep us warm, the chain mail is to protect us from some of the tank residents. So the first thing we do is usually lay the suit out on the ground. You're starting with a quarter inch of neoprene, putting about a 20 pound chain mail suit made out of stainless steel on top of that. So the easiest way to do it is to sit down on the ground and kind of wiggle yourself into the bottom of it. Once the legs are in, there are some snaps on each ankle. And then from there, you can start pulling it up like a set of pants but then it has a set of suspenders that go along with it to keep the legs up on you and not drooping down like a wet blanket. And then just like a jacket, throw it over your shoulders, zip up the front, there's a belt that snaps, and that's most of it for the suit. It takes quite a bit longer to do than it does to explain, however. Now once you have the suit on, then it's our backpack with our scuba tank, our scuba regulators. The last things that are really going on are a, a chainmail hood that comes up over the top, chainmail gloves, walking down into the exhibit, and then the final are mask and fins, and off we go. Another one of the last things that we do before we get in the water are put rubber bands on the top of the chainmail gloves on our hands. Uh, it's difficult to get a perfect fit out of metal. Uh, so the rubber bands are the high-tech solution to try to get them to just fit a little bit better, give you a little bit more dexterity in the water. On the surface, it's a bit much. Once you hit the water, though, it's usually a piece of cake. Some days you'll get in and the animals are not particularly interested in what you're doing, and other days they might show quite a lot of interest, which is why we assign a safety diver every time we're in the water, someone who's watching the animals and their behavior. The safety diver will always have a five foot long pole with a red end on it. And if the shark were to come close enough, it allows us to give them kind of a gentle guide away from the dive team. We've never had an animal in that exhibit that has bitten any of us, but it's something that we like to keep between us and the sharks at all times. But one of our biggest concerns in using the chain mail suits is when we're working on the acrylic window. Uh, the acrylic window is made out of plastic uh, it's a hard plastic, but it will scratch. In the past, we've tried things like plastic suits on the outside of all of this gear, and those suits were actually really, really difficult to get on top of chain mail and on top of neoprene in the whole nine yards. One of the simplest pieces of gear that we use, it's a, a black suction cup around four inches in diameter made out of rubber. And that allows you, when you're working on a vertical surface, to hold on to that acrylic window and still get some leverage and polish the window. Uh, it's one of my favorite pieces of gear because it's only about five bucks, but I'm very particular about the suction cup I use because it makes life a lot simpler. The favorite thing I think to doing what I'm doing is that I'm just as excited about these animals as the people that walk in the door and are seeing these things for the first time. What's, what's great is that the second it starts feeling a, a little bit routine, a white shark is swimming past you, uh, not inches away, an animal that most folks don't see their entire life. It's an incredible experience, and it's uh, certainly one I wouldn't pass up.